handbook for the new paradigm. A personal message for you. This is a point in the evolution of the planet that brings to the forefront of each individual's thoughts the question of why me, why now, and what is really going on in the reality that is right now in the time we are experiencing. What really is going on behind the scenes we are aware of through the five senses? Why is there this feeling that there is more to the story than just appearances? Who indeed has set this up and is pulling the strings? Is it really just a group of somebodies that is in charge? If this is the case, then is this God thing really a hoax after all? There are those who believe that to be the true essence of the scenario. Fortunately for the good of all, that is not the truth. The truth is that there are multiple levels of activity behind what appears to be a play of incredible magnitude. Who then is writing the lines for the characters and what is the point of the script? Would you be surprised to learn that you are writing the lines? And until you can figure out a point of the script, there is none. If that is the case, then which of the individuals on the planet can figure out one? Well, indeed, there is a focus group that has decided that they would like to put forth their point in the script. There's just one problem with this. They have decided to put forth a focus within the play that is not in harmony with the creator of the stage and the theater that this play is to be performed upon. In fact, the plan that this group has in mind has a great surprise at the end of the audience and the actors of the stage. They intend to destroy the audience, the actors, the stage, and the theater. Since the creator of this theater likes this particular theater and thinks of it as a pet project, this idea doesn't appeal to him at all. Since he is not in the business of standing in the way of the creative presentations that are produced within its confines, then he's hoping that the audience will decide to make changes of their own. There is a type of presentation that involves participation of the audience other than just sitting and observing. The theater entrepreneur is wondering whether if the play being presented becomes obnoxious enough to the audience, they will simply walk away and withdraw their attention. This would then allow the cast and the directors to destroy themselves. But then the theater owner doesn't want his property destroyed along with them. He is hoping that the audience will come up with some other solution. Perhaps there could be an audience participation that would perhaps introduce some new characters that would create lines of script of their own. If a new storyline could be introduced with characters that could change the ending, then the performance could be a comedy or a mystery or a love story rather than a tragedy. Maybe audience participation could indeed create a whole new genre of experience. Instead of depicting repetition of experiences already known, could the audience in the intensity of desire change the storyline? Come up with a creative scenario that would encompass possibilities not yet experienced. Why not? The greater the desire for change, the greater opportunity for creative new boundary expanding story themes. Within the spontaneity of group focus, without the academic control of leadership, with an intended purpose, conception outside of ordinary themes is not only possible, it's probable. To what purpose is this discussion being instigated? It is time that you awaken to your responsibility to change the destination of the path you are now being pushed to take. It's far past the stage of leading you, it's at the stage of pushing you. It is at the stage where resistance cannot be successful. Therefore, you are going to have to accomplish this by some other means. A way must be literally created that will bring about a solution. Nothing that you have done before will accomplish the change in this situation. Those who have brought you to this point know your current human nature so well that every possibility that you can think of has been blocked. Every cell of resistance is well known by them and is allowed to exist because it has a purpose in their plan. These will be used as graphic examples of what they will not allow. Now you must come into this understanding that there is a passage to this experience for mankind but you must move into a creative stance, not a resistive posture. This is not what is expected of you based on your past modes of experience. I can assure you that your history has been analyzed and studied by minds and computer model to the point that you are known to an extent that you cannot even imagine. Every reactive scenario has been dissected to the cellular level and restrictive actions planned for each of them. You are faced with the possibility of your very extinction unless you can make a cosmic leak to a level of creative imagination that will completely nullify those plans. Have you not computers of your own? Can you not band into creative discussion groups and ask for 
entry into the mind of that which created you, where two or more of you are gathered together in my name, within the focused desire for a harmonious understanding, there also I am. Cries and begging to be relieved of the situation by God or Jesus, Buddha or Mohammed will not do it. You have allowed this evil to descend upon you, and it is you, individually and collectively, that must take it upon yourselves to conceive this solution. A new consciousness change must take place within you. Not all of humanity will choose to participate. There will be some that will hide their heads in blame and grovel in the victimhood. So be it. Let them. You have no time to recruit among them, for what of creativity could they offer? This is a clarion call to the consciousness of those with the strength of character to stand up within their own conscious awareness and decide that the situation shall not be allowed to continue to its planned completion. Even those who are in the midst of this abominable plan have no idea that the end is indeed to be annihilation. Unfortunately, it is not only planned to be annihilation of the people and the planet, but of realms beyond imagination. How shall it be done? How can a change come about in the midst of such a lack of understanding of who and what you are? Now, while there is yet time, before the news tightens, movement and the planet is yet possible. Groups shall come together to stretch their conscious awareness, to invoke the aid of the highest sources of knowledge, to assist them in conceiving the new way of experiencing manifested existence. This must not be copied from any other experience. It must be literally a conceptual leap, not in its entirety, but an invocation of the beginning framework of such an experience. This is not a process that can be spelled out. It is shadowy in the beginning and is conceived as a possibility, and so it should be. Known boundaries of experience must be transcended. A superhuman assignment, indeed, but not impossible. Out of challenge born to desire and necessity comes a conception of that which is different. Has mankind on this planet been presented with this opportunity before? Indeed. But each time he reverted to known strategies. Now it has been of this, his creation that this situation exists. It has been his task to make this leap, and so he has now made it so that it must be undertaken, or face a possibility he may cease to exist. All of this is his own doing. Mankind has no one else to blame, so there must be a 180 degree turn from the past, refusal to take on the whole project, to taking it on with resolve and dedication. The focus of energy that holds this planet in orbit within this solar system does not require the power of force to do this, but uses an available process that does not require effort. The concept of power has within it the inherent understanding of effort as force. Since thought attracts, you have brought to you the experience of effort, force, and power. There are other experiences available that do not use this concept. Rocketry projects are an example. Your resources are used to effort one rocket and its payload into the orbits of this planet and then beyond. Yet you are visited by beings of other planets that enter and leave your planet's gravitational field without this wasteful effort. Does this prove to you that there are other ways to accomplish movement without such wasteful and dangerous methods? The search for answers to this question intrigues the mind. There are many that know these possibilities exist, but are unable to envision the answers without the need of using great effort to resist what they envision ties them to the planet. It's not the gravitation field that ties them here, it's a consciousness. It's the interactivity of thought acting upon thought that eludes them. They know that their thoughts can influence the outcome of an experiment. However, the concepts that once projected can be released to interact within itself and that it can produce an outcome beyond a controlled or desired outcome is not understood. The need to control, observe, and to prove the process prevents them from reaching into new realms of understanding. What is lacking is the ability to trust that the process can only proceed within positive outcomes once it is released to act within and upon itself. Thought released to act upon itself will return in manifestation glorified and in a form more magnificent than the limited focused mind can imagine. Now the challenge comes to those who desire to be the instruments of changing the negative plans for the destiny of the planet. Can you expand your consciousness to encompass the process that lies just beyond your grasp? It will be necessary for you to begin with the basic desire of participating within a new paradigm of experience. 
However, to leave the known and desire to venture into unknown requires a courage to release what you feel is the advancement this civilization has made from its Stone Age beginning into modern technological comfort for many on this planet. You know that the word civilization is synonymous with slavery. In order to accomplish this experience, it is required giving up the freedom of personal choice in order that the group organization might have precedence. Beyond the family, no organization is necessary. Personal responsibility is the keynote of freedom. Cooperation is a natural phenomenon as long as the need to control is absent. The need to control is a learned activity that becomes habitual through the experience of it. How does one transcend the habitual activity when it is deeply ingrained at the planetary level? It has now reached a point that in and of himself man cannot break this addiction. The adversaries know this well. They assure that humanity cannot change it. How then will it occur as the primary starting point of the shift to a new paradigm of experience? It can be done by understanding that thought focused and released can indeed act within itself and upon itself. Though it sounds simplistic, and indeed it is reality, it is simple. It's a powerful tool. In order for this process to work, there are some criteria that must be present. Since it is a process of divine order, it must have, at its intentional level, the desire to coordinate within this perpetual process. The purpose of it must be conceived with the focus of the continual involvement of those who will benefit from its inception. Through the outward movement of its spheres of influence, the intent of its purpose is the key to the success of the coordination with and within the flow of divine order. If this is reduced to a mathematical formula, then its inclusion cannot cause a change in any of the divine formulas that allow the balance of the whole to exist in harmony. Thought thinking within itself would know if it was acceptable or not. That is the reason the opposition cannot take advantage of this process. Purity of intent to harmonize as the motive is a primary prerequisite. The outlying thought must be specific only in the intent of purpose. It must provide direction of purpose, allowing the thought-thinking process to proceed into divine order by releasing it in total trust, knowing it is accomplished in what you call etheric levels and will then manifest into this recognizable reality using all the available triggers for appropriate interaction. How can you know that this actually will accomplish the desired results and is not just another ploy of the opposition to keep you controlled? Have you heard of this on your own media reports? Is anyone within the approved world of communication touting this as the thing for you to do? Indeed not. You are programmed to focus your energies into the salvaging of your sexy bodies and in your humanitarian thoughts for the suffering multitudes as you have another bite of your steak dinner at the restaurant or at least another convenient hamburger on your way home from your unproductive labors at the computer keyboard. The process through which you receive this information does use the wonders of your computer. It is a demonstration of thought interacting within itself with the addition of focus. It is the focus of your intent that will initiate the process that you desire. Then thought focused through purposeful intent will complete itself in magnificence through the energy of your faith and trust. Firmly holding to the knowledge that the etheric form of it was completed in less than the blinking of your eye will allow it to manifest into third dimensional reality. The computer-like process of the creation are indeed endowed with quickness. Then again, the ball shall be returned to your court for more to be done within your dimension. It is with careful and focused intent that the reality of this earthly experience is now being engineered into a pattern of downward movement into the darker and heavier energies that are at the lower end of the scale in which the human body can exist. This makes the contact between the extension, the spirit and the body, and its soul, the focus source, more difficult. This is not the whole of the intent. This allows for the possibility of separation of the two energies intricate manipulations of this extension energy must be accomplished in order for this to be possibility. The capture of this soul energy is the purpose of causing a break in the chain of energies that extend from the matrix of the soul. It is the belief of those doing this that it will cause a breakdown of the positive energies that comprise the basic building blocks of creation. In other words, 
They perceive that causing a break in the return flow of the energy back to its source will cause a disruption in the larger combined pattern of the galactic matrix. The conception of this group of separatists is that a chain reaction will happen allowing for chaos to such a degree that their focus can reorganize this chaos into their own matrix. This is quite an arrogant and ambitious undertaking. The plan includes many more quite fantastic steps to follow through its completion. This is not a plan conceived on a moment's notice. It is one that has been put together over eons of time in your county. However, since their plans are countered to the controlling parameters within the creation has come into manifested experience, they are unable to take advantage of the processes that also act as fail-safe guards available to the creation for the purpose of preventing this planned procedure from causing such an event. Your logical question is how has this rebellion been allowed to continue to this point? The free will aspect is what has been exploited as a basis for their ability to manipulate humanity to be the vehicle of their power. Yours is the exact state of consciousness to serve their purpose. You are malleable enough to be influenced into desiring change when pressure is applied to the soul extension connection and change is exactly what they want. At each critical junction in the previous cycles, mankind has been influenced to change what was present rather than to desire an entire new experience. Within the cycles of energy that maintain manifested creation at the various dimensions, there are critical points which allows for changing the vibratory parameters of these dimensions. There is within this opportunity ways that they've worked out to create a downward spiral into heavier energy rather than the lifting of vibration as was intended. This can only happen when the mass consciousness of that vibratory level of planetary experience has its focus on experiences at the lowest level of that dimension. As we approach another one of these opportunities, you can observe where the mass consciousness is with regard to what you call ethics and character by considering the role models that are currently popular. However, there's a risk for them in their process. There is a point at which a restrictive pressure of controlling the thought process of the mass consciousness of the planet can backfire and cause exactly the opposite of what they have planned. This will cause them to miss the opportunity of the final dimensional vibratory change needed for the completion of their plans. They have been successful in the use of the various techniques enable them to greatly weaken the soul-human extension connection. Because of technology and greater understanding of the nature of human experience, Techniques have been developed that indicate success in the process of separating extension and soul. There is a considerable overconfidence in the success of the techniques used on individuals as being applicable to large groups of a critical percentage of the mass consciousness. The results of these experimental successes have them quite intoxicated and already savoring the completion of their divergent goals. However, it is possible to reverse these procedures and reunite the energy into wholeness again, though the complete healing of these beings that have been used as guinea pigs will require much help. The grace of the Creator shall be showered upon those individuals to assure the soul matrix is not distorted. The implications of this picture are many, but do not despair, for in the knowledge of this, you can plainly see that you are not alone in the healing of this situation. It is just that free will is of the essence of how you got yourselves into this situation, and it will be through the use of free will that you will desire to finally do something drastic enough that will get you through it. You have used change to get you out before, and it has only altered the situation. It did not resolve it completely. In this case, the scenario is such that it is literally do or die, to borrow your vernacular. Within the proper choice of focus lies your salvation. Smile, you're on the winning side. As each of you come to understand this is a pivotal time in which to complete a spiritual journey involving multiple trips through this earthly experience, it will become obvious that there's not a moment to be wasted in the final hours of this episode. If you are to accomplish this goal and end this chapter of history of planetary experience, those who have chosen to mock the Creator's plan must not write it. This is the time in which you cannot leave this change in the hands of others. It's too great a responsibility to be left to a few. You must make your contribution in order to be assured that it will be accomplished and that you shall be included in the multitude that make this a reality. To accomplish this, 
First, you must open your eyes and see what is happening around you. You must then come to the unpleasant understanding that you have allowed this to occur because the overwhelming mythology of deception influenced you and resisted becoming involved through taking any personal responsibility and changing it. Careful remembering of the past intuitive feelings bring you to the truth. You are now and have been aware that something sinister is present. In all honesty, you lack the courage to look at what it might be because of the implications of what it could involve personally. Courage to do this has come through the change of your attitude. The magnitude of the implication of what the planners of this situation are capable of doing to your personal future and in that of the family and friends has allowed your desire to know to overwhelm your reluctance. This then leads to the necessity of considering this larger implication for the planet and its inhabitants as a whole. This process has brought to you to the point of looking directly into the face of truth. Unfortunately, it's not some religious or esoteric concept that is, the truth will set you free, but what has been in your own desire to avoid at all cost. What you must understand is that this truth is about a situation that could end your earthly experience in extremely unpleasant circumstances and places your eternal existence in jeopardy. The stakes are extremely high and the circumstances are dire indeed. This is not a time to hide in your usual excuse of what can one person do. A large number of one persons can accomplish a great deal. Becoming cannon fodder is not the solution. It's required that you become a much more subtle influence. Learn one truth now. Subtle energy is powerful, and the most powerful energy is subtle. Your Bible says in the beginning was the word. The words are thoughts spoken out loud. An inaccurate translation. In the beginning was thought. That is the subtle energy we are asking you to employ. Simply change the focus of your thought. Do not allow yourself to dwell upon the horrors of what is planned for you, but turn your thought to what is that you would prefer to experience. You are trained by their mythology to think only about the programming thoughts of acquiring things, opinions of others, self-preservation among thieves and murderers, and escape from self-directed thoughts through addiction to TV, movies, and soul-jarring music. Last but not least, pursuit of sexual experience, be it in or out of a monogamous relationship. There is also the mind-boggling profusion of religious entities to further lead you from the personal quest of understanding the connection to the source of your presence on this planet in the first place. I can assure you that Jesus, Buddha, and Muhammad had nothing to do with it. It is not that these beings did not exist, nor that they were not here to attempt to give you guidance in getting to this dilemma. But the message they brought were distorted long ago. Neither did they come here to get you out by your belief of their existence, past or present. They came to teach you that you must get yourself through this by taking personal responsibility and creating, through thought, a new planetary experience. In this way only will you be able to move through this painful experience. You accept this responsibility by making a personal commitment between you and the creative energy that focused you through your thoughts into this existence. You will know how to participate in creating what will replace this living nightmare with a new experience. How? You search for it through your desire to know and participate in its creation. Then through seemingly miraculous coincidence, how to participate shall become known to you. The critical point of the process is making the commitment within your own awareness that the most important thing is participating in the creation of an experience that is 180 degrees opposite what is now planned to be your final earthly sojourn. The evidence of the necessity to do this surrounds you in irrefutable profusion. You need only to open your eyes, consider the changes in your personal freedoms that are happening in quick succession, and listen to Hear the research evidence in both spoken and written presentations on your radios, internet, and in books. Very soon, those will no longer be available to you, leaving only word of mouth. So it is imperative that you respond to this information. You are encouraged to react only through your change of attitude and in your commitment to become a part of the subtly powerful movement. There will not be an Armageddon as suggested in their version of the Bible. It shall be a replacement of the planned world through shifting the focus of the awareness of the beings on this planet 
toward that which is desired rather than which is being forced upon them. It shall be the individual inner change that conquer the outer forces that plan to control your very essence of self-awareness. Upon the acceptance of this clarion call lies the future of your survival and the experiences that await for you within eternity. Indeed, this is a glorious day. The rain falls and the air is clean. Rain is falling generously on the planet and Mother Earth begins the washing of herself in earnest. Is this being engineered? It would appear so. But are there contemptuous machines all that powerful? Do not be so sure. Remember that Earth is a projection of thought and thought is self-aware and interacts within itself to greater or lesser degrees. Would Earth think to a greater or lesser degree? That's a question to contemplate. This is a moment in which to be aware of the changing of the guard. It seems that the destiny of the planet has been wrested from the control of its inhabitants, as it would appear the control of the Republic of the USA has been taken from its people. Movement within the conscious awareness of the inhabitants present has begun. These levels of consciousness are subtle and they are powerful. Notice of this change in consciousness is not at a vibratory level that will alert the negative forces. Its momentum builds within the subtle, powerful planes of energy forces that hold this planet in focus. It is the thought interacting within itself. It is acting in concert as a changing perception of the mass consciousness that is similar to a natural shedding process. Like the snake, there's an itchiness that's being felt. This process allows for a time of vulnerability and the dangers from enemies, for it is an internal process. The snake indeed goes within an available den because during this internal process it becomes literally blind. All focus is within itself as the process goes through its formation of a new outside experience for it has outgrown its ability to continue as it is. Even the covering of the eyes has changed so that it sees its world anew. Only the death of the snake can prevent this cyclical occurrence. Thus, it takes great care during this process. This is an apt analogy for our consideration of the progress of mankind through what appears to be a dilemma of great proportion. Just as a fetus grows too large for the womb and must give up its current experience and adventure out into a completely new environment, there are guiding examples throughout nature to suggest its process is a natural phase of manifested life experience. The separation of man from nature by being herded into metropolitan areas is not an accident. It has been used many times to suppress individual power to control the experience of life. Closely compacted form is more easily pushed to and fro in the effort of moving individuals into experiences that are contrary to their natural desires toward individual responsibility in choosing their life experience. This herding smothers the natural desires and opens the psyche to influence by the confusion that is drawn within the totality of the being. There is a fundamental call from within each for balance. The lack of the ability to choose experiences freely causes the distortion of energy patterns that bring intuitional discomfort and searchings to change that feeling. This need is then led to unending streams of unfilling pursuits by those who would change the destiny of this planetary experience. However, there are ingrained patterns of experience that are reminiscent of the skin-shedding process that cannot be distorted. The negative forces have their time schedule that must be met. The timing of this process of human skin-changing is not one that they are privy to know more, no matter how they analyze and reanalyze the human experience from their perspective. Can you now realize that thought thinking within itself has created fail-safe checks that prevent destruction, if at all possible? Again, we are faced with that one element that can put on hold even the failsafe checks and balances, free will. Each has personal responsibility for the use of this great grip of the Creator. He has confidence that the fragments of himself may enjoy taking themselves to the edge of extinction for the fun of the adventure. But just as in your action movies, a depiction of this underlying adventurous focus, through perfect timing the hero moves through this scenario with hardly a scratch, or at least nothing that cannot be healed. Sometimes you miss the point of the movies. You are now at the critical place in this script. It is time to ride in the shift of momentum from the bad guys to the hero so that he can experience that unexpected twist of the storyline that allows for his harrowing escape, leaving the bad guys holding the bag. 
let us hope that it's not a Superman or a secret agent adventure, in which, again, there is no end to the bad guy and another adventure between them is waiting in the wings. You've already experienced those scripts. Again, you've missed the point of the movies. You feel that the sense of satisfaction of evil vanquished when you leave that genre of movie? That is the point of it, to always leave you with the idea that evil remains no matter what you do. Were not your experiences in Korea, Vietnam, and Desert Storm outward depictions of the same frustrating movie? All wars had the same result. It has just not been part of the plan until recently to flaunt it so plainly for you to see. Your ability to discern and react is being tested over and over. Why would the items of what is being sanctioned or withheld from innocent people in Iraq be published in your newspapers? What do these items for personal use of individual innocent people have to do with prevention of war preparation? These lists were published worldwide. How do you think the people who uphold their degenerate president who is instigating this are thought by the rest of the world? A new movie genre is now being released now. In these, your people are being held accountable. These depict surges of justifiable retribution, terrorism, and are being planted in the minds of those of other countries. Their ideal of America as the light of the world is being destroyed by your diplomacy of arrogance towards other countries' right of self-determination. These punishments are seen as appropriate by them, for they are unable to resist this injustice on a larger scale. The disturbances used as excuses to interfere within the borders of the countries are made to give the appearance that there is a necessity to intervene for the good of the citizens. These contrived situations are a hoax, created by subversive groups like the CIA. The result and aftermath of your American intervention is hardly what you are told it is. Guilt as being used as a tool will not serve in the charade. Do not waste your time on it. Resolve to be part of the solution in order that this error in perception may be rectified. The wake-up call is being sounded, and the internal intuitional agitation to shed the skin of the deceptively controlled experience has begun in earnest. The time of choosing to move within the flow of creation or to remain stuck within the hoaxes upon all of humanity. Education, as it is known, is not an advantage. It is within each self-awareness that this process takes place. All are equal in the opportunity in this process. Believe that. Purity of response outweighs educational degrees. Those who know the least of what is going on will hear first. You have been educated into the deception that provides the grease upon the wheels of their plans. You have been fooled into supporting them as they carried forth their plans so far. They have been focused upon the uneducated and those unable to oppose the power you are giving the manifested evil ones who consent by believing their lies. In the reality that surrounds your awareness in the third dimensional experience, it's easier to allow the seduction of your five senses into believing that this is all there is to the duration of your stay within your body. Indeed, this has been further enhanced by the introduction of the visual aids of photos, movies, TV, and computers. To add telegraph, telephone, satellites, plus music and sporting events, all beginning in childhood at the earliest possible moment. Where is there, within this onslaught of mind-boggling confusion of distractions, time or desire to contemplate within silence anything but a replay of these experiences? The conscious awareness tries to clear out the clutter of this overload so that the contact can be made within your inner awareness and the contemplation can then begin of how and why you are within this experience. This is a process that goes on quite naturally, except for in the consciousness half of this combination is overloaded with stimuli. It should be immediately apparent to the reader that this is the case in the modern North American European parts of the world. Furthermore, it is spreading to the more affluent elements around the planet. Once exposed to this mind-stifling process, it appears to be relaxing. Not relaxing, it's mind-suppressing. The creative, self-contemplating portions of the awareness are being set down. The more the experience is repeated, the more of an addiction to it is acquired. Instead of enjoying mentally stimulating experiences, these are experienced as disquieting and downright irritating. Thus you see the joggers with their wired up ears listening rather than contemplating their own thoughts. Somehow, they must stay connected to their addiction by distraction. If not radios or tapes, 
and its car phones to stay connected so no one can pontificate with their friends. Can you, reading this or hearing this, separate yourself from the distraction of this process to contemplate and absorb descriptions of the wondrous fantasy land existing that you are experiencing? Where is what you call reality within a world that is mostly pretend? When you look in truth at the information you trade daily through your computer connections, how much of it is indeed concrete manifested reality? In the money transferred from one account to another, actual stacks of bills? Do that many stacks of denominations of money actually exist? Where are their banks safes to house trillions of dollars? Wake up, you are dreaming. Ah, but if you wake up, you will have to face the solid reality that you've been used. And that is too frightening to contemplate. How long do you think this dream bubble can go on expanding before it breaks of its own thinness, or perhaps because there are ones that will enjoy pricking the bubble? Would it not be best to wake up early and begin to dream a new ending to the nightmare in disguise that you are now experiencing? Can you do that? Of course you can. It's your dream. That you have been programmed to dream a particular scenario can only continue as long as you allow it. There is something called lucid dreaming in which you awaken to an awareness you are dreaming. Then you can stop at that degree of consciousness, observe yourself dreaming, and change the scenario of the dream. If you are being chased, create a safe hiding place. Have the pursuer fall into a hole or a train come between you and you escape. You have been lulled into a dream state by the distraction of your conscious awareness in order to separate you from your self-awareness state, which is the state in which you observe your dream process. You can correlate this into an awareness that will allow you to reclaim the severed connection to both parts of your total awareness. In truth, your intuitive awareness is beginning now to become awake to the truth of this information. You know that you have the power within yourself to encourage this feeling and come out of the unnatural state of distraction into full awareness. This waking process can allow you to avoid the fear and panic that you think facing it might bring, and instead give you an ability to discover yourself as a focus of energetic and creative expression. It will not awaken the brute caveman persona that you might expect. Instead, a contemplative ability to focus upon solutions that will come forth that will replace what was formerly sensed as an undefeatable force and an unsolvable situation. This force was smothering you in a deepening dream, reality that you will discover does not even exist. It may appear so to the five senses, but you perceive that beyond those lies a potential that supersedes what you have known before the same potential that pulls entrepreneurs into successful businessmen and explorers towards unknown places. It's an enticing, intuitional call that pulls them from the unknown to desire an experience that is unknown and holds a vibration of potential and success that cannot be resisted. Many hear the call, that they'll choose to answer it. That does not mean that it does not exist. The success stories are proof enough of its existence. It is hoped that this information for you to contemplate apart from your normal mesmerizing existence. Is there something beyond this enticing humdrum existence that could be even more rewarding? Indeed there is. Around the World in 80 Days was a marvelously funny satire on good and evil in competition. Don't we wish the same scenario and one's reality could be as carefree and funny with all the pratfalls and hair-raising potential danger scenes? You can rest assured that the observers that play upon the stage of the planet Earth are not laughing at the similar scenes as they pass through their manifested reality. Instead, they watch through detached wisdom knowing that the ending will be positive one, but with concern for how many awareness points shall move within the ascending transformation process and how many will be left to be shepherded through the process of another opportunity. It shall be a great relief to those when the earth experience in this particular point of focus will have been completed. Just how it shall all come together has become of major interest, for indeed you have created your own grand and spectacular stage play. The storyline is quite unique, something like the perils of Pauline of the galaxy. It is noted that the terms of universe and galaxy are tossed about with abandon and you will find yourself puzzled in the attempting to correlate with these into a meaningfully third dimensional understanding. In truth, this is not quite possible, but we will shall make an attempt at doing so. 
Galaxy refers to the flow of manifested reality around a center of focus. The universe refers to the focused intent of coagulation of energy that, in your terminology, lies beyond and supports this manifested reality. There are universal laws that allow for creation and maintenance of this galaxy. Since you are part of this galaxy, you have named the Milky Way. Then, if you are experienced in harmony within it, you must live within these laws. In this case, you are like children playing pin the tail on a donkey. For these laws have been withheld from you, and you are left to discover them by trial and error. Right now, you are far into the error process. Is this not how it has been ordained for you to learn them? Indeed not. The blindfold has been deliberately placed upon you, and you have been fooled into thinking that you have no right to remove it. The blindfold is the game of deception in which you are enticed to look where the magician deliberately presents action for you to watch while he supports it with motions you do not perceive. Your attention is focused on what you think is only the only action. Fortunately, not all the audience is fooled. They watch you and wonder why you do not see the process the magician used. The fact is they wonder why you are now at a stage where you only perceive his spotlighted action and do not even see the magician. You are so mesmerized that indeed the supporting motions to the actions are no longer even hidden. They pursued all around him on the stage and you still see none of them. How is this possible? By hypnotizing the conscious mind. Luckily, there's another part of the mind that's beyond this conscious thinking. Your psychologists called it your subconscious mind. They have painted it as holding your perception of life hostage because it's full of dark, horrible experiences perpetuated on you by well-meaning but abusive parents. As a result, you fear it and block it for participating in your experience of life. Why is the word life capitalized? Because that is the purpose of your experience on this planet. You are alive. That is aware of experiencing this life energy moving through you and played out on the screen of your observing ego mind. Ah. The ego, the devil of your existence, or so you have been led to believe. Anyone acting in a pushy manner is being considered egotistical. His ego has him by the necktie and is causing him to misbehave according to the imposed social norms. He is controlled by his evil subconscious acting out through his ego and he must be brought down a peg and that awful ego humbled in the compliance. The successful businessman is successful because his inflated ego runs amuck over others and snatches success from the hands of the deserving underling, and so forth. Need I go on painting this picture of the sleight of mind? What then is the true picture? If there is no ego, there will be no awareness of this manifested experience. The ego is your tape recorder. It's the observer of your thoughts, wants, needs, and desires. It takes these thoughts into a type of a robotic focus format, and this allows them to manifest into circumstances and situations that create your experience. It literally filters your thoughts, feelings, and desires, and causes them to coalesce into manifested experience. It is a process, not an entity. It is a process over which you have complete control. If you can take charge of your thoughts, feelings, and desires, and actively direct them towards what you want to experience, these thoughts must be relatively depictive. For example, if you simply focus on change, then expect chaos within your life, for that will be the change you create until you decide upon a more precise idea of what you want in the experience. The process of how this works involves a universal law called attraction. Once an idea is formed with a positive understanding that it is possible, then the ego holds this picture and completes the process through positive-negative polarity energy. Through the action of the law of attraction and the malleable nature of the potentiality of an idea actually coming into your experience, it does. Since instant manifestation of ideas on this planet at the moment is very difficult, the ego incorporates the process within your supporting idea of time. If you are unable to remain focused on your desire of a certain experience, then oftentimes you deny yourself that desired experience. There's a comment in your Bible regarding praying amiss. Since that which you refer to as God is creative in nature, whenever you are focusing your desire in a sincere manner for this experience, then you are in constant prayer, for you are within this creative, expansive expression that originates within the source of your existence.
But what if you are asking for something that would cause problems for someone else? The law works. But there is an effect for what you have caused. As noted above, you are using the universal law of attraction. And in its process involves like energy attracting more energy. If you cause a problem for someone else as a purposeful use of this law, then what you create for someone else you will also experience. It's like two sides of the same coin. One is presented to the other person and one is presented to you. If you are serious and attempting to understand this law, then if you dare, look at the events that you've already experienced and you will see that this has been the case many times. When you have wished a blessing for someone else, you also experienced one. Not in exactly the same way, but in something of meaning that came within your life. Consider also difficulties. I believe there is reverence in the Bible that instructs you to put a guard on your mouth for the words, including thoughts, that come forth do not return to you empty. In utilizing this understanding, you must hold a desire steadily within your consciousness. If you err in your desire by wishing to create a problem in the life of another, you have time early in the process to reconsider and to withdraw the focus of that intent. Then it will not manifest for them to experience. Emotions, strong feelings can increase the potential of manifestation and hurry the process, whether it is for your own good experience or for another one. The opposite is also true. It is time for the entertainment portion of this purposely written portion of the play and the distraction of your attention from your purpose for being within this experience on the planet Earth to end. Now you must decide whether to take back your power, remove the blindfold of your own volition, or wait until somebody removes it for you. The picture will be even more shocking if you wait, for you will be totally unprepared for the scene plan for you to view. There is little time remaining for you to make your decision. The glitchy world you are living within an illusion. Behind its facade is another one that plays out a game of power that requires your total cooperation and the giving of your creative power willingly by overwhelming your sense of possessing any personal power whatsoever. Example, but what can one person do? Sound familiar? Answer, more than you can possibly imagine. But first you must realize that you have that power. When the conditions of deterioration surround you, how can you comment that this is a glorious day? Indeed, it is, for those conditions are drawing to a close. The ending may contain surprises. Your Armageddon will arrive, but it shall not be in a format that you've been told to expect. The forces of light and darkness shall not parry and thrust in a format of war, but nonetheless the situation will have moments of what might be called confrontation, but it will not be in the third dimensional battle of armaments. This should be comforting for the power of even those the third dimensional devices can destroy the planet. If indeed the Creator is a focus of love, then the methods of destruction would not be possible. These are only possible within the distorted use of negative polarity energy. Within the two focus of positive negative energy lies the center point of harmony. This is the goal of all manifested energy, to exist within this harmonious point. However, it has one disadvantage in that the still point of existence would allow for no movement at all, thus it cannot be maintained for only a relatively short period. As a result, there is constant movement away from and returning to this ideal. Within the totality of the galaxy, there is a balance point between portions of it moving away and toward this still point. This is seen at the movement of the planets and what you perceive as the Maseroth or the Zodiac as they move in cycles around the center point of the galaxy. Within these revolving moments are many smaller cycles that you cannot observe. When a distortion occurs within one of the smaller cycles, it is allowed up to a certain point. When it reaches a point at which this distortion begins to affect larger cycles, then the attention is focused to correct the distortion. Its attention is now on planet Earth. Destruction would indeed affect other cycles. One planet in your solar system was already destroyed. Balance was maintained with great difficulty, but the loss of another planet would cause chaos that would be far-reaching indeed. For this reason, a great deal of attention is now being paid to your situation. If it were not for the limiting factor of the free will of the inhabitants, balance should have been obtained long before this point. The emphasis, the important obtaining consent through deception of the inhabitants, 
for the introduction of atomic destruction devices. Plans are afoot to create the very chaos that planetary destruction would bring. The stakes are very high indeed in this game of control. The plan behind this destruction is ambitious beyond your imagination. It involves the creation of negative polarity universe galaxy. To perpetuators of this situation, you are not even small fry in the game. This is a confrontational at the level of the creator of this universe galaxy. Have we made this up? Indeed, we wish we could tell you that. That is the usurping of your ability to make your free will decisions as to whether to cooperate or not. That is the small key to the success of their plan. This will allow you to understand the multiple levels of control that have been used and why your complete control, which of course is impossible, has been used as the manipulation beyond your deception. Indeed, there are many levels of control of the people on your planet. Those who think they are in control and planning this scenario are just as controlled as their plans for you. As this plays out, there are elements within the situation that are going to be more surprised than your general populace. However, because of the surprise will be a higher level than even that plan includes. What must be remembered in the greater perception of this is that all exists, and that does mean all. So out of the potentiality that underlines manifested creation, in following the layers of energies that coagulate into manifested realities in reverse order, the building blocks become finer and finer in vibrational quality until it reaches beyond what the Kabbalah calls onsoft or pure potentiality. In order to cause an entire galaxy to change polarities, it would be necessary to return to the point to cause such an event to happen. Needless to say, this is an extremely simplistic explanation, but should give you an understanding of the audacity of the idea and the relatively chances for its success. However, the attempt to do this by working backwards through the existing creation to accomplish this goal holds within it the possibility of a pattern resulting chaos of no small proportion. Now, to come upon the realization that your conscious consent had to be obtained in order to accomplish this should give you cause to take notice of your responsibility in all of this. Unless you wake up and change the path of which you are moving, there's a great possibility to be faced. Granted, you've been lulled into a zombie-like existence, but that has been your choice. You lack a personal responsibility towards yourselves and your fellow man. At the end of this sojourn into life experience, you stand and recount your experience in the light of full understanding. It is you who judge your own actions. No one judges you. You are then aware of what might have been had you lived your experiences through extending the love that created you rather than in pursuit of distractions that gave you no real satisfaction. What now do you do at this pivotal point in your time? In the knowledge of this picture, which you are hardly able to acknowledge may even be a possibility, what can you do? First, you must contemplate that this understanding and come to face within it your own conscious thinking process. You must consider it as a possibility of being true. Then you must admit to your unknowing complicity in the treatment of your fellow human beings on this planet. You must move through your regrets for having been unaware through a process of denial, for the existence of the situations was plainly presented to you by the magician. This use of your consent was by real conspirators with very large addendas to put into place. You cannot linger in the destructive guilt process. You must resolve to come into your personal responsibility to cause this situation to change from its intended path. You are expected to stop being a victim and certainly not to become a martyr, for there is no place to begin to resist this onslaught. You must vow and commit to be part of the solution. Then, despite the continuing push of deceptive encroachment into your awareness, you must begin to discern what is true. You must hold your resolve to move through this to a new and greater understanding. When this becomes your greatest personal truth, then you will find opportunities to become part of a different movement, employing methods that will not constitute physical resistance, but will use an entirely new approach. There is no other way open, for resistance on a physical level would be immediately snuffed out. Your constitution is no longer an effective shield and will be dissolved, but that matters not. It is an assuming personal responsibility that one accepts the challenge and does not fade in fear. Others shall come forth in like awareness and consciousness. Together, this spreading group awareness shall provide the pivotal point that will bring an end to this situation. 
The resolve to be part of the solution from the depths of personal consciousness is the key that will open the lock, end the imprisonment of the humanity, and bring forth true freedom to the inhabitants of this planet. Many are called, but few are choose to respond. Where do you stand at this pivotal point? You must ask yourself, and you must answer yourself. <laughs>